Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate the invitation and the opportunity to be here um, with you today. The topic of my talk will be coping and communication strategies for living well with melanoma. Please, if at any time uh, you find that I'm usually too soft or perhaps too loud, too high, too low, uh, or especially too fast, just raise a hand and let me know. So nothing to disclose. And just to overview uh, what we'll be speaking about today for the first part, when we'll be talking a little bit about coping strategies. And for the second, uh, we'll be talking about communication strategies. And then we'll wrap up. So to start with coping. What is coping? Um, coping is kind of the process of dealing with or managing stress. People might experience stress at the time of diagnosis while they're going through treatment for melanoma or in the time after treatment. Stress can be present in people going through it themselves and caregivers um, or others kind of affected by someone's illness. And I like this image or I kind of this idea of um, kind of there is something that uh, may be difficult to deal with, stressful, feels out of control. And a psycho psychoanalyst, uh, Karen Horner, a German uh, psychoanalyst, had the uh, goal of psychotherapy of helping people not move away um, from or move against, but move with challenges. And this idea of moving with challenges, of riding this bull and learning to live with it is what we'll be talking about now. So I just wanted to start by providing some examples of what coping is. You may think um, about negative coping strategies. Uh, there are certainly plenty of those. We can think of um, you know, different ways that we um, take our minds away um, from what we're dealing with. Uh, distraction in its most extreme form is avoidance or denial. But a little bit of distraction, you know, using activities to take someone's mind off of things can actually be a healthy way to cope with what you're going through. So things like you know, focusing more on work, reading, watching TV, or sleeping. Seeking emotional support from other people is an important way that we as humans cope. Um, and this can come in many different forms, and it can be hard to ask for, um, hard to identify. It's important to validate that it is emotional to go through serious illness, um, and that support is important. Humor. We um, all know people who cope through humor. Um, reframing is a coping skill that sometimes takes a little muscle. Um, it takes a little practice to build that muscle. Um, and this doesn't mean to say you have to be happy about everything that's happening. It's just to say that, you know, it's, there are some ways to find kind of positive aspects of what you're going through. And that kind of approach for um, finding those kind of positive aspects about, uh, about stressful situations has been shown to be helpful for improving kind of overall health and well-being to have that be a kind of consistent focus and something that we practice. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to think about it that way all the time. Problem solving. So things like throwing yourself into learning about your illness or about nutrition or about other things can be a really healthy way to cope with illness and with stress. <clears throat> uh, and then acceptance. Uh, again, I'm not standing here telling you you have to be psyched <laughs> about stressful situations, about illness, about health and things not going as you plan. Um, rather, uh, this is the idea of riding that bull thinking about how to live with illness as opposed to spending energy, thinking about how to make it go away or uh, trying to, to struggle against uh, something that's going on. Spirituality is an important way uh, that a lot of people cope. They find um, strength and support through religious communities. Um, Mindfulness, uh, using meditation, using yoga, using mindfulness-based stress reduction programs um, can be very helpful. Being physically active is a really important way to cope. And reflecting on life experiences, I have a patient who um, just spends a lot of time 
organizing photos, writing emails to her kids, um, just as a way to sort of reflect on things that um, help her feel fulfilled and bring her joy, remembering positive memories um, as just an important way to cope with what she's going through. It's a, um, a form of distraction and also that kind of reframing. I name all of these to say, you are very likely doing many of these things in your own life and you should get some credit for that work that you're doing for your health. Um, and there may be things that you're not aware of um, or skills that you might want to um, invest time in and find resources to practice. Um, and all of these things can be kind of helpful for overall well-being. So Mr. Rogers is here to remind me to just turn to your neighbor. We're going to take a moment, um, and I put this whole list up. This is just a short list. Um, there are many other ways that people cope with stress, and it may be that what comes to your mind when you think about stress is going through illness, uh, treatment, um, surveillance, but it may be something else in your life, caring for a sick loved one, a stressful situation that is completely unrelated to health. And uh, I would love it if you would take a moment, think about which of these things you use or something else that's not on the list and just think to yourself um, and maybe write it down. And then we'll have a, a minute of just turning to your neighbor and say, what do you use the most? And maybe we can share some ideas. So we'll just take literally one minute. All right, we'll come back together. Does anyone want to share? Something that either they're doing or their neighbor's doing? Something you want to be doing? I do gratitude. Wonderful. Tell me more. Oh, sure. Um, she said she uses gratitude, which is fantastic. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit more? Um, I had my scan results on Friday. So Microphone's coming. I had my scan results on Friday. So Thursday night as I'm laying in bed getting scans um, I'm laying there. And I thanked my body. I, you know, Beautiful. I thanked my eye that sacrificed to get clean margin. I thanked the other eye for picking up the slack and doing the work on two. And I thanked the rest of my body being strong and carrying me through this. And, I, you know, that that's just one example. And because I, I'm a big mind, body, soul connection. And when I had lymphoma and I went into remission, I had a gratitude party to thank everybody who supported me through it. Yeah. And I got good skin results yesterday. So Fantastic. I'm having another gratitude party <laughs> somewhere. Maybe not as big as the last one, but I will thank you Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. And just um, to repeat, she uses gratitude, um, which is a magnificent way um, to sort of reflect, um, to positively reframe, um, to connect with your body. Um, that is, um, she mentioned, uh, thanking her eye, her other eye. Love it. Um, so gratitude. Another one that what didn't um, explicitly get called out, but something that people talk about a lot, it's sort of part of mindfulness, is the idea of living in the moment and living in this very day, um, as opposed to kind of thinking about 
the past or the future and sort of building a big storyline. Um, there's sort of some kind of meditative and sort of Buddhist principles to that, but that is a, a strategy that, that many people find to be helpful. So thank you for indulging me in that exercise. Thinking about who can be helpful um, for coping, these people may already be members of your team, but there are, if they're not, um, these are people you may want to add for thinking about coping support. Social workers, um, psychologists, support groups, and these can take so many different forms in 2019. Um, there are online forums on which people can find support, foundations, um, have a lot of resources for connecting people, either live or in person or virtually. Um, um, and then I have further down on the list, the fitness community, things like um, getting together at the Y can be a source of support in addition to kind of physical exercise and outlet. Palliative care, um, as Dr. Sullivan mentioned, and I'll um, say a bit more about that in a moment. Um, finding a spiritual leader or community or identifying something that, that you've been doing throughout your life and kind of reconnecting to that, um, if that's something that has drifted away. <clears throat> and then I put here other to remind myself, I have, um, I know people who have reconnected to AA, even after kind of years of being sober and away from it, because there are many strong coping skills that people develop through the, um, dealing with things like substance use disorder. And so it can come in funny places. You don't necessarily know where that support um, will be, um, but the main um, key is to um, find something that works for you to help with managing the stress and, and not to necessarily go it alone. <coughs> so what is palliative care? Um, as Dr. Sullivan mentioned, it's specialized care for people living with serious illness. And the goal is to provide relief from symptoms and stress of serious illness and improve quality of life for people going through illness and their family. It's appropriate at any age and any stage of illness and it can be provided alongside curative intent treatment. This really is a paradigm shift um, from the way that we used to perceive this type of care. Um, and I'm a proud um, provider of this, of this type of care. We love this quote in palliative care, hope lies not in a way out, but a way through, that sort of concept of um, finding ways to, to live with stressful situations and um, rather than uh, trying to find ways to avoid. This is my symbol to um, change gears. So for the next part, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about uh, communication and um, some W's, the kind of who, what, where, why. And I'm starting with the why. Why is good communication important? Um, so communication leads to better understanding. Understanding what to expect helps us to prepare. And knowing what's important um, and sharing that and discussing that with uh, medical team and uh, family can help guide healthcare decisions. Um, and so this is the who. Uh, who might you think about communicating with um, in the course of serious illness? Um, in the course of melanoma, uh, your medical team, obviously, um, family and friends. And then there are different types of communication that you might think about um, with other people in your social circles. Um, so people at work, um, people that you know through different things. You might have different kind of layers of how you're communicating with folks in your life. Thinking about the what of, kind of what's most important in communication, I think one of the most important things that, that you can do, and this is kind of obviously happening for everyone who's here, um, people who are dealing with melanoma and their caregivers and loved ones, just making sure that you understand uh, your illness, making sure that you understand melanoma, making sure that you understand your treatment plan. Here are some questions that I think are really important. Just knowing what is my diagnosis, you'd be shocked like people are going through treatment and you would assume that they have a good understanding. There may be details that are relevant that may help, you know, guide your further questions or help guide your research that didn't necessarily came up or came up in a time when we were in a total fog of stress that might be worth talking about um, more slowly and carefully um, at a calm time. So the stage of the melanoma. What mark tumor markers are present, um, aspects about um, staging and, and thickness. Um, what is the course, uh, usual course for people with cancer like mine? So sometimes it can be difficult to ask about that for, for myself, but thinking about for other people who are in similar shoes, what do you know? Of course, we could never have total perfect prediction or crystal ball, um, but we, the way that we learn and the way that we predict for people is knowing what's happened to other people who've been in similar situations. 
other questions that I think are important. Um, what is my treatment plan? How does it work? How will it affect my life? How likely is it to be helpful? This idea of how often has it been helpful in others with cancer like mine? When will we learn if it's helping and how? Um, and when the treatment ends, what is the plan for surveillance and how can I stay as healthy as possible? <coughs> Broad questions that I think are always important to think about with both your medical team and your family and loved ones in the setting of melanoma and diagnosis and treatment in the setting of really any health related um, circumstance. What is most important to you? We're really making an effort as a health system here in partners to um, address some of these questions. And you'd think that this is some kind of routine conversation topic with your medical providers, but it's not necessarily. We're, we're learning to kind of talk about these things and take, take space away from specific treatment you can put assumptions yourself and based on what you're hoping for, what your goals are and what you're worried about, your medical team wants to know these things. Um, and hopefully they're also asking you, um, but these are things that you can, you can lead and you can guide. A little, a couple of hows for communication and um, kind of best practices, things that can be helpful. Um, preparing, making a list of your questions prior to appointments. Has anyone had the experience that you kind of come into a visit and everything you thought of goes right out your head? So writing things down, bringing somebody with you, um, bringing a notebook or a recorder. Um, and then when you close an encounter or close a visit, uh, knowing how to get back in touch with your medical team. Um, finding out how to navigate kind of any resources that are there for you, like the patient portal system, if that's in your health system. Um, and just ways to, to get in your medical information so that you can think about things in between visits. <clears throat> I put up a list of resources, um, including the phenomenal website uh, from AIM at Melanoma. Um, the NCI, NCCN, ACS all have good websites. And then I um, included some websites that are helpful for people with advanced cancer who are thinking about kind of decisions uh, in the event of, kind of health worsening um, that can be helpful for initiating those conversations with um, family and loved ones. So I wanna just take another reflection moment um, to just think to yourself about lessons that you've learned from any of the talks today and just make sure that you um, give yourself some hearty credit for being here on this Saturday morning, taking ownership um, of your health um, and, and your care for your loved ones. And um, think about, are there any things that you're gonna take from today and have be a next step um, in your care, whether it's nutrition or physical activity, um, lesson that you learned or a goal for kind of reconnecting with a coping strategy that you may have drifted away from thinking about other people who may be helpful to add to your team, and just know that you are not alone. Um, so thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, and thanks to uh, MGH Palliative Care and the Cancer Center generally for the incredible support. Thanks to Dr. Cohen. I'll take questions with the Q&A.